Hi there. Um, so uh, this is a quick lecture just talking a little bit more about how we would actually figure out the length of our molecules. If you remember in our class, we've been talking about uh, the fact that um, we can measure the probability of, let's see, if we have, uh, you know, a bunch of, um, you know, these kind of units of polymer kind of kind of together. We've done these things where we, we try to calculate the probability of it being, let's say, you know, five to the right, six to the right, things like that. Um, but if you remember, when we actually calculate, let's say, the probability uh, for you know given a given a um, uh, for for an, uh, an n equals one hundred uh, molecule, if you remember, if we when we calculate the probability of forty, let's say, um, going to the right versus the probability of 50 going to the right, it was something around like 0 0.133, which means there's still like 13%. So, so it means um, there are about a little more than a tenth of the particles uh, that are in um, uh, the, the 40 state compared to the number there in the 50 state. Um, that doesn't sound like a lot, but I mean, it's it's not zero. And, and if you did, obviously, 45, it would be even higher. And so what you find is that it's not just that the um, that all of the you know the polymers, if we had a whole collection of these, uh, would all be in that, the 50 state. Um, it's that there's a higher probability of them being in a 50 state, but there's going to be some distribution around that. It turns out it's actually going to be a Gaussian distribution that looks like this. And kind of the width of that, um, that, that uh, distribution is going to depend on um, uh, on on basically how um, uh, on how long the polymer is, and so as, as it gets longer, it's going to get more and more peaked. In any case, we what I'd like to do is kind of take a step back and and do something uh, a little simpler, which is just to ask, on average, what is the actual size? Um, and we're going to do that just by kind of slowly going through some similar kind of things that we did with actually diffusion, uh, but looking at it a little bit different. We can start with a really simple uh, question, which is to just say, what's the? It, we're we're going to just let's just look at what the average end-to-end -end distance is. And I'm just going to draw this as r. Now we're only going to do this in one dimension. So when I'm doing this as r, uh, you can also think of it as x if you prefer. Uh, it, it's it's kind of up to you. Um, but what r is is again the average end-to-end -end distance. Um, all that's going to be is we're just going to have to add up all the little steps that we take. Um, so let's say the distance between these two is a. Um, uh, we're going to um, uh, we we're going to have a step which we're going to let's say call x1 plus x2, where this is just our first step. This is our second step. So if you imagine a polymer, this is x1, this is x2, this is x3, this is x4, um, or you know we could do this x1 x2, but then if it steps back, this would be x3, and this would be x4. So the idea is that we need to add up all these little steps. If we add up all those steps, we'll get what it is. Uh, um, and so, for instance, uh, in, uh, in, in th this kind of generic case, where we just have 4, for this first one, um, we would just have uh, plus a, plus a, plus a, plus a is equal to 4a. And so we'd find that the average uh, uh, um, distance uh, end -to end distance was 4a. Um, for the second one, um, we would have plus a plus a minus a minus a. And so we'd find that this is 0. All right. Um, and, so, uh, and so all we're doing is we're just adding up the steps um, just like that. Now, um, in math, if you remember, hopefully you do, um, there is uh, there is some we don't we don't we generally uh, don't like doing oh my god I can't scroll um, we generally like don't like doing uh, things like that because um, uh, we tend we're going to have a lot of them and so if we have to write all of these x's it's going to be a pain in the butt and so what we do instead is we do something we use something called a sum all right where we just say okay I'm going so going to this just means I'm going to add all of the xi, so all of these little x's, each one of the x's, and it's going to go from from uh, where i equals one, so that's x one, let's say, you know, right here up here at the top, um, all the way up to n, where n is the total number of polymers that we have. All right, and we're going to average those up. Uh, we're going to um, we're going to do that. What we're going to ask is what is what is that sum 
on average. Now, um, I've got some news for you. Uh, the, the, the chance of us going to the right is as likely as going to the left, uh, which again, we've talked about a lot. Um, and so if you have this sum where we're, where we're on average as likely to add up a plus as we are to a minus, as long as we're generally doing pretty large numbers, this is always going to equal zero. All right, and all that's telling us is actually not telling us that much. Um, it's just telling us that on average, we're more likely, to, we're as likely to go to the left as to the right. And so if we add up a bunch of things that are as likely to go to the left as the right, on average, we're just going to get zero um, if they're all the same size. So that's actually not that useful. It actually doesn't tell us that much about the size. It just kind of tells us that on average, and then distance is going to be zero. What we're going to do is we're going to use something instead called the variance. All right, what the variance is, um, is it's the exact same idea, but we're going to take the average value of the r of r squared, all right? And what that is going to be is instead of um, of adding up uh, all the um, uh, all of the x by themselves, we're going to multiply them together. So we're going to take um, uh, let's say x1 times x1. We're then also going to add x1 times x2. We're then also going to add x1 times x3, and we're going to add x1 times x4, and then we're going to go back and also add x2 times x1, uh, um, uh, and, and x2 times x2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this is, this is the whole idea behind this. Um, so that's, that's basically how we're going to, to, to do this. Um, you may ask, well, wh why are we doing it? Well, it turns out if you take the square root of this variance, all right, this is what's called the root mean displacement, all right? Um, it's, it's the standard deviation of the location of the end on average. And again, uh, what this will t give us is it will give us some idea about how, um, about how far away all the different parts are from each other and, about, and, and approximately what the size is. All right, um, now let's get our actual notation again. The way that we can write this is we're going to do another sum, i equals one uh, to, um, to n. We need another variable because we've already used i, so we're gonna use j equals one to n. And then we're just gonna have xi times xj. So again, that's exactly what I've written above here, which is that we're just gonna multiply the two together um, and, and then just add them all up all right, just like we did up there for all the different things. All right, so that's the, that's the kind of the idea. Now, um, there are two special cases for this. Um, if you look at this, what you can what you and, and you kind of think about it, there's the case where i is equal to j. All right, so these are these guys. All right, where we actually have both of the the numbers equal to each other. We're going to separate those out of this sum. So we're going to say i equals j equals one. Um, and then we're going to take x i uh, x oh, oops, sorry x i squared because in in these cases in this case both of the numbers are the same and so we can just say that it's the square it's the two squared um, and then we're also going to um, add where x uh, sorry where i is not equal to j. Um, and we're still going to go from 1 to n. All right. Um, and then we're going to multiply x, i, and x, j together. Now, again, we're going to, we can make the same argument for, um, uh, for this, this one as we did for the argument up above over here, which is that on average, the x, i, and xj are as likely to be uh, are, are are as likely to be plus 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 minus or minus minus. So basically, there's um, the the likelihood of them having uh, either a plus or minus sign is equally likely. Which means that whenever we're just multiplying them together, half the time we're going to get minus, half the time we're going to get plus. When you add it all together, we're, they're actually all going to sum up to zero. Um, and so this term, it turns out, is actually going to be zero. All right, um, and so we actually don't have to worry about that. And so we just end up with this final um, sum down here, which just says um, 
Uh, oh, let me get rid of this. Sorry, I didn't mean to have that square root still there. Um, we're just going to have this sum here, which is that the, the average squared, uh, uh, r squared, the average distance squared um, of the two things is just going to be i equals j equals 1 to n of xi squared. All right. Now, um, xi squared is just um, is is just the uh, the step size, which is either remember xi xi is always equal to plus or minus a. The nice thing about xi squared is that if uh, xi is plus, um, a times a uh, is just a squared, and if xi is negative negative a times negative a is also a squared. So no matter what these numbers are, this is always a squared. And so we're just adding a squared n times. So this is just adding a squared n times. Well, if you add a squared n times, all you get is n a squared. And so you find that this value is just equal to n a squared. Um, the cool thing is, is now we can do this, take the square root of this and get the thing that's actually interesting, which is the root mean squared average distance. Um, and that just gives us the square root of n times a, uh, because if you take square root of a squared, you get a. Um, and so this is the average distance. And what this basically is telling us is that on average, uh, the size of this actual molecule goes as the square root of the number times a. And so for instance, if we had, let's say, um, a polymer where each step was, so, so for example, we had a polymer where each step was one nanometer. So the distance that each that each monomer was taking up or each each unit was taking up was one nanometer. Um, uh, then, um, and we had an n equal to 100 Let's just say, all right. So, so a hundred, a hundred uh, polymer. All we can we can say immediately that the average root mean displacement, which is generally going to be the average size that we see if we just look at this thing, we just look at the size of this kind of blob of the of the um, of the, the the actual molecule. It's just going to be square root of one hundred times one nanometer, which is just equal to ten nanometers. And so now we know that on average, um, a, a, a hundred nanometer long um, a, a, you know, polymer that has units of n equals one um, will be on average about a size of 10 nanometers, which is pretty cool. All right, so that's, that's interesting. Um, uh, to give some, uh, some terminology, um, this model is called the freely jointed chain. For obvious reasons, basically what it's thinking about is that we have these um, these things that are connected to each other, and the joints between them are free to rotate anywhere they want to. So that's why it's called the freely jointed chain. You also see it just abbreviated as FGC because people are always lazy and don't like to write. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is is how do we actually find out what the size of these units are for any kind of random polymer? Um, the the answer is that first of all this this, in, in the freely jointed chain, this average size of a polymer is called the Kuhn length. So the Kuhn length is basically the size of one of one monomer, or the size between the those freely jointed chain uh, units. Um, and the short answer is that you just look these up. Um, so so we, we can look up what, what the Kuhn length is for different things. Um, so for instance, for DNA, which isn't actually much of a very good freely jointed chain, but if you get it big enough, it can be. For DNA, the Kuhn length um, is 300 nanometers. All right. And so again, if we had, um, uh, uh, sorry, did I say 300 nanometers? I meant 300 base pairs, uh, which, is, um, which is about 100 nanometers. All right. Um, so if I had, for instance, a DNA that was, um, let's say, uh, let's say if I have a, a length of DNA that is um, uh, uh, 10,000, uh, let's, let's do it this way. We'll, we'll go the whole way through. We'll make it 30,000 
base pairs. All right. That means that since a coon length is 300 base pairs, that means I actually have 100 coon lengths of um, uh, of DNA. That's just by um, just just by taking the 300 uh, the 30,000 base pairs and dividing by 300 base pairs. All right. So I have three. I have 100 coon lengths, and each coon length, the size of each of each coon length, is 300 base pairs or um, or 100 nanometers. And so again, if I wanted to say, if I had this random piece of DNA and I wanted to find what is the average size of it, if I treat it as a freely jointed chain, um, again, all I have to do is I just take the square root of n times the coon length. In this case, it's the square root of 100 times uh, 100 nanometers. And we get that the average side is just going to be uh, 10, which is square root of 100, times 100 nanometers, or around 1,000 nanometers. Um, or, that's, uh, that's not approximately equal, it's exactly equal to 1 micrometer. All right, and so a 30,000 base pair piece of DNA, um, which is the same as a hundred, a, a, um, uh, a, um, uh, which is the same as about a um, 300, uh, sorry, um, uh, 100 um, uh, coon length piece of DNA um, uh, will, on average, be about one micron in size. All right, and so that's how we do this. It's, it's, and this the idea behind the freely jointed chain. It gives us some idea about how big. Again, if we get our little squiggly DNA, um, this this the approximate sizes would be about one micron. That's about what you're telling you. And that's what this square root of. Oh, you can't quite see that. Sorry. Let me. Um, Make sure we can see that there. So anyway, that's the whole idea is that that would be approximately you know one micro one micrometer or so. All right, I think that tells you as much as you need to know about this. I um, uh, hope this was useful. Um, let me know if you have any questions.